Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Mario and I'm going to be talking about hermeneutics and mediation and how to integrate both ancestral wisdom and modern science for the psychedelic renaissance. So I'm from Mexico and Mexico is the richest country in, in psychoactive plants and mushrooms, according to Gordon Wasson and Richard, er Richard Evan Schultz, the plant of the gods. Uh, Mexico, it's also host to a great diversity of indigenous cultures that make use of these sacred plants. Um, uh, it is from this rich soil of indigenous sacred traditions that the psilocybin containing mushroom came to be known to the world. Um, that was in 1952 when the encounter of Gordon Wasson uh, and Maria Sabina, the Mazatec mushroom healer, uh, came into, into contact with each other, meeting both worlds. And then uh, from then on, the Western sciences has been transformed by the finding of lots of benefits from the Mastic sacred technology. Um, the psychedelic community has taken very big steps after this. And, and we have walked so far now, the road ahead of us the psychedelic movement seems to be bright and promising. However, I believe that uh, before we continue walking, we should take a look back and see if there is something missing on the road. Very recently, there was an art article published uh, in Chakruna webpage, and it says psychedelics are currently undergoing a renaissance in psychiatry with psilocybin at the forefront. However, this important substance is tainted by original sin. Science has never paid off its historical debt to the Mazatec people of Mexico, who preserved this psychoactive substance for posterity. In another article called uh, Ethical Concerns about Psilocybin Intellectual Property, uh, the authors said that from an indigenous perspective, psilocybin research and drug development tells a story of extraction cultural appropriation, bioprospecting, and colonization. Uh, in, it's for this situation that Ismail Ali from MAPS says that, for now, companies commercializing traditional medicine should divert some funds to provide support for indigenous people. But that is just one step. I believe that before we keep doing more research in advance in the Western psychedelic science, it would be wise to question the way that we are currently operating within the psychedelic community. So the psychedelic Renaissance movement situation characterizes itself by several um, uh, precepts that come actually from modern Western worldview. And this is the scientific, Western scientific worldview as a dominant perspective. The uh, fragmented and uncommunicated knowledges, meaning that each discipline focuses on its, its own uh, domain without uh, bridging these knowledges to the other disciplines. And it is centered on the individual's healing, missing the social and cosmological implications of work with psychedelics. Um, this way of building science ignores the importance of the indigenous people, ancestral knowledges, practices, and worldviews. I believe this entails some ethical dilemmas. Um, so I ask myself, how can we avoid an oppressing imposition, colonization, and cultural extractivism from one culture to the other, mainly from Western culture to the indigenous uh, uh, people? Is it possible to integrate both ancestral wisdom and modern science? And uh, can we work in a more reciprocal and cooperative, cooperative way together? To answer those questions, I believe we need a new kind of player in the psychedelic arena. So uh, I propose that we need a mediator to balance the different players in the psychedelic arena. And this mediator uh, should take into account a philosophical and methodological approach that's called hermeneutics. So what is hermeneutics? Hermeneutics is, um, well, believes that truth 
is an interpretation coming from a specific point of view. That means we cannot access to the whole truth uh, in, in, in a objective, ops absolute way. Each interpretation reveals a unique aspect of truth. And, and so we can, we can no longer um, we can no longer just count on one perspective to understand the whole phenomena. Uh, it's, it's ethics, it's way of relating to the other. It, it values the other ways of being in the world and looks to create an ethical and respectful dialogue with it. And it operates by building bridges of communication on, and honoring the ineffable mystery that goes beyond language and beyond uh, each perspective. Hermeneutics is inspired by the Greek god Hermes. He's a god of language, communication, mediation, inter, inter exchange, and magic. He was also revered by the alchemist as uh, Mercury, the conciliator of solid and liquid, matter and spirit, psyche and cosmos. Um, so what I propose is the role of the mediator would be to communicate the different dimensions of reality meaning not just focusing uh, on one domain, either the psyche domain, which has been taken by psychology, the society domain, which has been studied by anthropology, and the cosmological uh, dimension, which has been taken by philosophy. So how can an hermeneutical er approach contribute in each dimension? Well, um, for that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be focusing on each of these individual dimensions and how hermeneutics can help us uh, work with this. First, in the cosmological dimension, uh, I believe that hermeneutics can create conceptual bridges of communication between worldviews, looking for similarities and honoring the ineffable mystery beyond language. Uh, that is, I believe, Except for Roland Griffith's studies on the importance, important role of spirituality and mystical experience in the individual healings, very few studies or works has been made on the cosmological implications of, of psychedelics. And since I'm, I'm a philosopher uh, uh, from profession, I'd like to focus a bit more on this, on this aspect. So um, hermeneutics of myth and symbols is a branch of, of philosophy uh, and uh, multidisciplinary studies uh, that has studied different symbols and myths from, all, uh, from cultures all over the world. And some authors such as Aldous Huxley, Ken Wilber, Joseph Campbell, Mircea Eliade, among others, um, have been studying uh, the underlying universal doctrine that has been known as a perennial philosophy, that which is uh, the same in every culture, except it changes names and symbols. Also, Aldous Huxley and Stanislav Grof said that psychedelics can open us to this uh, perennial philosophy that is commonly, commonly reported in the psychedelic experiences. So what is what does this perennial philosophy says? It says uh, basically that reality is way much more than, than we perceive. There are, that it is multidimensional and it has layers that we can perceive through different states of consciousness. That is what uh, the anthropologist Mark Loffin says, the polyphasic perception, meaning that these ancestral cultures, indigenous people and mystical uh, religious um, traditions believe that not just a regular state of consciousness is valuable, but also other states of consciousness that can be accessed through trance, uh, dreams, and expanded states of consciousness, uh, in, in, such as entheogenic visions. It also says that every being is interconnected to a bigger whole. That means that the individual is not isolated from its environment. So psyche, is not separated from society and society in itself is not separated to the whole of the cosmos. Um, within this perspective, sickness is understood as being disconnected 
from the big from the bigger whole. Another principle of this perennial philosophy it says that time is measured as a recurrent cycles of the eternal present. That means they they believe that there is just one reality and that this reality uh, is not linear. It means it it comes once and again to certain cycles. Uh, so therefore they value that which has which has always been and that which will which will always be. And lastly, they believe that uh, the, behind the multiplicity of phenomena, there is a divine unity and cosmic consciousness. That means that nature and the whole universe is aware of, it, of itself and is, it is a being that encompasses all, all and has been known as either God or the boy or uh, the great spirit or in different cultures, uh, such as the Lakota, like Huancatanca, in the pre-Hispanic Mexico, as Ometeotl or Tlokenahuaque, among other names. So in contrast to this, the modern worldview uh, holds the, uh, it's a monophasic consciousness culture. That means that we, we regard ordinary states of consciousness as the only valuable uh, cognitive uh, state. And uh, therefore, it perceives only one dimension of reality. Uh, it is a culture that perceives the individual as fragmented to the whole. And it is therefore an ego-centered culture. Um, modern worldview also holds the time is a li linear and ever-changing progressive arrow and therefore values only the new and the future. It forgets the answers to knowledges and it tries to, uh, to raise that which has been in the past. And finally, it is a disenchanted world, neglecting the spiritual dimension. And therefore it believes that nature is just uh, a blind uh, and, and unconscious force that can be exploited for human benefit. So this worldview is the one that has taken us into so much problems such as environmental crisis and pollution, consumerism, social injustice, poverty, mental health problems and existential, existential crisis among others. Um, I wonder if the, is the modern worldview lacking connectedness with nature and the spiritual dimensions? And therefore, can the study of different worldviews such as the indigenous cultures help us reconnect to the sacred nature and, and dimension, sacred dimension of, of, of the universe? Okay, so in the second dimension, the social dimension, uh, the mediator would need to help create a reciprocity and social justice between the different players in the psychedelic arena. That is something that the Chakruna Institute has been uh, talking about, and it's actually about to launch this indigenous Repro reciprocity initiative of the Americas. Also, Nyerika Institute, a, it tries to preserve the sacred traditions of, of indigenous people with sacred plants. And so the mediator will need to connect these movements to the whole uh, psychedelic uh, community. And finally, in the psychic dimension, um, we, the mediator will need to question the way modern psychotherapy and psychiatry is working. Uh, so the Western healing methods focus mainly on the individual's healing and separates the physical, emotional, and spiritual dimensions of being. Instead, we can learn to integrate the answers to wisdom. So the immediate would need to find a hybrid and intercultural model for treatment that integrates uh, the answers to healing methods, such as um, group ceremonies, shans, myths, storytelling, ritual, among others. This 
to come in collaboration with modern psychotherapy and psychiatry. This is something that people like Francois Boursat and Anya Loisaga are trying to do by searching for intercultural models of, of healing. So I believe that right now we are in the psychedelic movement at a crossroad where we can either ignore the answers to other that preceded us, or we can change the narrative and integrate in a more collaborative and reciprocal way, uh, honoring those that have preceded us as protectors of the sacred plants and, and holders of this ancestral wisdom. So I believe hermeneutics is a very valuable tool or approach to mediate and reconcile the science of the future and the ancestral knowledges of indigenous culture, bridging modern progress with the eternal wisdom of the mystics. Uh, so which way are we headed? Thank you, and I'll leave you my contact in here. Goodbye.